Hi, this is MC Shetty for a new tutorial about Lost Cities Asset System. In this tutorial, I will uh, show you how you can make your own assets for Lost Cities, new buildings, new blocks, uh, change various things. Uh, this is for in 1.18 or 1.19. If you go on uh, my wiki, you find that for 1.18 and newer, there is a new page explaining the asset system. Um, so there will also be a link to this tutorial here. So this is a good reference. It's not complete. It contains a few examples, a few things. Um, so yeah. Also, if you want to check what Lostiti self uses, which is important so let's say 1.18 uh, so if you go to source main resources data lost cities lost cities so this these are all the assets for lost cities and i believe um, you can't download i don't think you can specifically Download this directory. Uh, what you can do, of course, is go to the, the main page. And here you can either check it out with Git or else download the zip, which will contain that folder. So that, that might be a good idea to have as, as a reference uh, so that you can uh, see how it's done in Lost Cities itself. Okay. Um, yeah. So basically, I'm going to use IntelliJ, although we are not going to do any coding. The only reason I use this is because it's a convenient way to edit multiple files. Uh, but you can use anything, it can be text, data, or whatever, it doesn't matter. Um, but basically, let's go over all the assets. So there are different types of assets. Um, let's start with the main entry point, that's the world style. So this is the standard world style, which is uh, used by default. And there's a few things that are important here. So a world style refer reference is actually important to check how the world will generate or the cities in the world will generate. generate. And uh, one thing that you want to do is first you have to select the outside style. and this will refer to a style, uh, not the world type, but the style. And style is what uh, basically selects which blocks are going to be used for things that are not in the city. That, that's why it's called outside. I will explain what these styles are in a moment, uh, but let's concentrate on the world side first. The next section is this, scattered, and that's a relatively new feature. Uh, this is about all the things like the radio tower, the Ulrich and the cabins that you can find uh, outside cities. And how does this work? Basically, you set an area si size in chunks. That means that every 8 by 8 chunks, there is 1 in 10 chance that one of these will generate. Or at least that it will attempt to generate one of these. Um, so when this chance applies, so 1 in 10 chance, it will try all these and see which ones are possible because there are restrictions. For example, radio tower cannot spawn in oceans, rivers or beaches. An oil rig can only spawn in deep ocean. Um, there is a maximum height diff, which, is, which means basically between the lowest point of the chunk and the highest point of the chunk, there can be only three difference. For the oil rig, there is no limit because it spawns above water. And for the cabin, there's also a limit. So it tries to find all possible uh, structures there. And it will add all the weights like this and add this weight as well. And then it will have a total weight for all of this. It will pick a random number and based on that random number it will either pick one of these 
at least if it's valid, or it will pick nothing. So there's still, even in one in ten chance, there's still a chance that nothing will be picked. So you see that already is pretty rare, it's only in deep ocean and it has a very low weight. So even if the others are not selected, because in deep oceans the others will not work, there's still only one in 21 chance from the one in 10 chance that an oil rig will generate in an area of 8x8. Eight eight. Okay, so that's the scattered system. The next section in the world style is the city biome uh, multipliers. So basically, in a previous video I explained how uh, cities work and that there's a city factor, a number which determines how much city there is at a certain spot. Zero means no city, one and higher means a very dense city, and so on. You can influence that f uh, city factor uh, with these, for example, in any ocean type. Uh, so for example, these are text, but you can also use uh, uh, specific biomes. You multiply the factor by this number, which means it will get lower. So that decreases the chance of city spawning in oceans. It doesn't completely eliminate it, but it decreases it. Same for here in rivers, there's also less chance for cities to spawn. Then the final section is uh, the selection of the style. So we already had the selection for the style outside, that's this. But we also need a selection for the style inside cities. And this is a, a list and it will randomly pick one with these factors uh, any that apply. For example, uh, there is the city style desert for desert type cities, which only works in these two biomes. And it has a very high factor. So when we are in desert, there's a very big chance that we will get uh, this type of style. Otherwise, it will be this style. So let's go to the styles now. So let's first check the standard style. Basically what this does, it selects palettes which are used uh, for the buildings or for other structures. And it's an, a list. It will always select one palette from each entry. So it, there's only one uh, entry palette in the first list. So this will always be selected. It's the common palette which is used all the time. The second list also will always be selected. The reason that these are separate is because if you go, for example, to a desert, you see that the second one is another palette for the buildings, but the common section is the same. Okay, so that's basically how this works. The rest are for randomizing buildings. So basically, the first entry is for the building blocks themselves. And there are four types of bricks that you can have. And the second, uh, and this section is for random randomizing the glass. And there's a final section uh, for randomizing uh, various attributes that can be either glass or bricks. Uh, so to give a bit more variation to every building. And the final palette used per chunk will be this, and this, and one of these, and one of these, and finally one of these. It will combine these palettes per chunk uh, based on the conditions here. In a desert, it will be almost the same. Uh, yeah, default deserts palette is used instead. There are different building blocks. The glass is probably the same, and this one is also the same. Um, for outside, there's also palette, so we have common default again. Uh, only one type of brick for the buildings outside, one type of glass and one type of uh, variation here. Okay, let's check the palettes now. Um, this is a bit more complicated, but let's go over it. So common, uh, this is the common palette that's used everywhere, it's in all styles. So Basically, to recap, world styles, from world styles you get a style, and from style you get a palette. So that's basically it. And what do we do here? We say uh, this character is this block, 
and there's sometimes some attributes for example this is a spawner uh, let's take another one this is capital T torch a wall facing torch uh, this is also to make sure uh, if this is set uh, those cities will try to orient the torch correctly so it will ignore, ignore this one uh, close stone uh, so a lit redstone torch so that's how you can specify these properties um, this is a special one uh, this is a, a random uh, selection from four types of blocks um, how does this work basically these factors are combined but they are kept in total you can only have it this is compiled to a table of 128 entries so the fact that this is thousand here uh, doesn't really matter it will only use 32 uh, I use thousand here to indicate that this is the final one but it will cap it to 32 because the total can only be up to 128 so in this case this means that every of these blocks has the same chance of appearing so this is class uh, another random one for class uh, these are random uh, flowers and, and saplings these are random flowers um, yeah this is some land random uh, very strong loot that you can find in a special dungeon um, these are some features that you can find in buildings uh, furnace crafting table and so on uh, the fallback here is a cobweb this is either cobweb or air to randomize cobwebs a bit and then some some other two things for example here is another one with uh, loot so you can if you have another type of chest you can put that here so that's the common palette uh, default palette is basically the same this is uh, separated from common palette because this is the one we want to change based on the biome desert for example um, and these contain more things that are used inside buildings things that we want to configure um, so the desert one will be exactly the same except uh, it has more other colors from uh, blocks yeah glass glass also always has three entries so you have glass the pane and this is uh, well how can I show it um, yeah um, so this is always class this is always pain and this is class or pain depending on what is uh, selected which is randomized so that means that the building can be made using if a building is made using this it will always be the full block if a building is made using this it will always be the pain but if a building is using this then it will be randomized depending on what the style selects which palette is selected Yeah, so here is another randomizer so that means that this character will be this character from the palette or this character will be this palette character from the palette so that's how you can refer to other palette entries here um yeah by the way there's also but i don't use that very often can i let's ah yeah here instead of block you can also specify variant and let me go check a variant uh, so which variant stone brick so basically that's just a shortcut so that you don't have to specify this all the time and what does this do remember randomizes block N nine tenths nine chance in 128 that it's cracked eight chances that it's mossy and otherwise it's just bricks so that randomizes the walls a bit so with variants you can just make it easier and you can use these in palettes so now that we uh, checked how the palettes and the styles work let's see how these are used so in parts these are all the things that together make up either a building or stairs or something else for example let's take let's concentrate on building one so building one there are different uh, sections here 
So first there's this floor and you can look up in the palette what this means. So A, remember that was the uh, the class that was randomized, so it will be either a full block or a pane. Um, this is this is a feature. By the way, if, um, I will also show you how you can edit things in game. You don't have to do this with this, but that will be in the second part of the tutorial. So basically, this is one floor of of building one, and this is another floor of building one. Uh, floors are always six high uh, for buildings at least if, if you have other structures they can be another height but buildings have to be six high every level of a building has to be six high uh, so let's go to check a building so building one okay so this is the filler block so whenever Lost Cities has to fill up parts that are missing, for example, to make sure that the building is not floating, to fill up what's below the building, it will use this block. If the building is damaged, it will use this block. So here you can specify which entries from the palette that Lost Cities has to use. By the way, something I forgot to mention in palettes, if you go check to default, let's... Oh, that's not here. Um, yeah, here, here for example, um, there's also damage section. That means that if a, this block is damaged, there's a chance it will be replaced with iron bars. So that's what I wanted to explain. Um, yeah, so we were talking about the buildings. So, how does this work? These are all the parts that are used for the building. And there's always a condition. For example, this part can be used up at any level, but not at the top. Same for all these parts. This part can only be used at the top. So, when you have a building of level of height 7, for example, it will use one of these for the six first levels, and then one of these for the top and that's how this works let's see if I have other there are other conditions that you can use um, checking if I can find one now top is used most by the way you can as you can see here you can also specify uh, this is a building that's actually using building one assets but it has an, another uh, type of uh, it replaces a part of the parent of the uh, I'm checking for other conditions. Oh yeah, here. Here you can specify specifically this part is only for floor one, uh, zero, the bottom floor. This for floor one, floor two. This is not for the top, but it can only occur starting at level three. So you see there are different conditions that you can use. By the way, you'll notice, so these four and these four, that's for the multi-buildings. So that's always one chunk of the 2x2 two two multi-building. The multi-buildings, let's check the library, are explained here. So these are the buildings that are used for this multi-building. Okay. And scattered buildings uh, can also be multi-buildings, by the way. And multi-buildings can go up to 3x3. Three three. Uh, but we don't have any examples of that. Um, oh yeah, there is also, uh, I was actually, uh, there's also a city style, and did I explain something wrong? Yeah, this is the city style, not the style, uh, I was uh, city style standard, but city style standard inherits from city style common and there you have yeah various attributes that are used uh, for various things streets for parks and so on and also which buildings are possible so with a chance and which building type with multi buildings are possible which bridges are possible fronts uh, fronts are uh, things that are put in front of a building 
stairs, fountains, parks, and real dungeons. And city style config, which is this one. Uh, I was wondering. Oh yeah, this use and this refers to the standard style. So this is the standard city style, which ref which selects the standard style. Yes, the city style desert will select another style. It will inherit from city style common for all the this attribute, and this will inherit from city style config. Uh, that was for technical reasons, but not that important. Okay. Another thing I want to explain is conditions. These are used uh, to determine what type of uh, loot you will get in the chests. For example, from range 4 to 100, you can get this. And from minus 100 in the sellers, you can get this. And otherwise, you, you can get any of these. So it, here you can change what type of loot table you get. And here you can change the easy mobs and the hard mobs that are selected by the spawner in the palette. Okay, so the final thing we need to explain is the scattered system. And scattered system is very simple. We specify this is the building, so it refers to a building. We say where can it generate? It can generate at the highest spot. Um, and it doesn't try to, to fix the terrain. And it, but it generates three lower. That's because if you go check at the cabin part, um, oh, that was it, right? Cabin. The first three sections are generated inside the ground. So th it generates at the highest points, but three lower. That's basically what happens here. Okay, doesn't matter. Uh, the oil rig only uh, at above ocean, and it will repeat the bottom a section of the part until it hits ground. So that's how these pillars are made, and it will generate one higher than the ocean level. Radio tower highest non yes yeah, same principle. All right, so next step. Let's say you want to modify how lost cities generate. So I'm doing this in IntelliJ Intel. Again, you don't have to do this, but basically you make a folder with the following structure. It contains a packpunt MC meta, like this. You can put any description there. Um, the data will contain what we want to do. I will go into that later. And then meta-inf with this file. Um, basically, this is what you need. Uh, low code FML is the type of mod loader. So that means that we will make a mod, but it doesn't contain any code. It's for 1.18 or later, because this data pack will actually be compatible with 1.18 as well. This is the mod ID, the version, display name, description, and a dependency. It says we need lost cities, it is mandatory, uh, and this is the minimum version we require. And so you make this structure, and if you then put this in a zip file and rename it to jar, you can put it in the mods directory and it will work as a mod. All right, so basically there are two things you can do now. You can replace any asset from Lost Cities with this, and you can add your own assets. So let's see how you replace. Basically, you have a Lost Cities folder and an, another Lost Cities here. This basically mirrors the same structure. Uh, let's close a few things here. This, mi this mirrors, uh, mirrors exactly the same structure as here, Lost Cities, Lost Cities. And if you follow exactly the same structure, you can replace assets. And this mod, as it were, will load after Lost City, so it will replace the part from Lost Cities. So we have another common punch JSON. And basically what we did, just as a 
example, we change this one to other types of blocks. So instead of the common JSON, this one where the F uh, was the furnace crafting table brewing stand, in our version we have a blast furnace and so on. And I believe um, there's another difference. Uh, why is this working? Oh yeah, that's better. So yeah, so that we replaced. And we also put a new bl flower there and replaced the poppy with the azure blue. It. So that's basically what we did here. We also replaced the parts for building one. Uh, and we added a lot more of these. So the, there's a few parts we replaced, only the first four. And that's everything that we replaced. But we also add a few assets. We add a new style, test world style. Same outside style, scattered is the same. Biome multipliers is the same. Only thing we do is we don't have the desert anymore. So if you compare the standard world style, this one. So here we had two possible city styles depending on this, the biome, but we don't do that in our style. We only have the city style test style. And this city style, yeah, this is all the same. Uh, basically, it makes it so there are no multi buildings and only building one can be used. That's basically the only thing we do. Okay, so the next thing to do is you go to that folder where you created this structure and this is Linux, but on Windows this works just as well. Uh, compress here as zip. Yeah. And you rename that to jar because a jar file is a zip file. And you put that, I made a multi MC instance with only lost cities. And now I put this one in here as well. Let's fire it up and see if it works. All right, so we have four mods loaded. Minecraft, Lost Cities, Test Assets and Forge. So our mod is recognized, that's good. Uh, let's create a world. More world options, cities. We will use standard, but we want to use our world style. So we customize it. Standard every Test Asset, Test World. That's our world style. And we create a new world with that world style. All right, so we are in a world. So this is only building one, but you see the different variations. Uh, so you see that this is another that's that was with these side palettes. By the way, this is a front section. Um, so if you go. Oh, yeah. Um, you can act yeah that that goes to standard output uh, which you can actually see if you edit instance and Minecraft log yeah so it sh shows the building type and various other things with the city style that we're using so you can see if the things are right with that comment in the log uh, so we also modified the building, so let's check that out. See, uh, no example here. Oh yeah, there you see already. So th these are uh, replaced, that was what we put there. Yeah, yeah here again, yeah, it's a good example. Yeah, and here you see uh, the flowers that we put. So this is also working. Okay, um, let's find a deep ocean. Hopefully we find an Ulrich, because I want to demonstrate how you can edit 
uh, parts. By the way, that's one of these rare dungeons that you see here. Contains good loot. Uh, apparently it's not that rare anymore. Let me try to find an Ulrich. Alright, had to find another ocean, but here is one. So, this is a scattered uh, structure. There you see how the bottom part, this one, uh, is repeated all the way down until it hits the ocean floor. There. So that's what was done in that uh, scattered uh, section. There are four parts. So you can see the four chunks. So, yeah, there's a witch here. Um, say you want to edit this. So, yeah, this is not possible. Then I, I forgot something. Um, so, list parts will show you. This world was not created with edit mode enabled. This comment is not possible. So, if you want to edit parts, you need to do something special. I will show you how. So, let's basically make another world. And then we go to this section and we enable edit mode. Okay, again. Let's try to find... Look, we don't actually need to do this, but I want to show it on the Ulrich. Because it's a good example. Um... Let's try to find it. All right, we found another Ulrich. Let's try this again. Let's try to edit a certain part. <laughs> so if you do this part, you see we, we find an Ulrich at s height 64. So Ulrich 10. So that's this part that we're in. And now we are editing this, and you can, for example, make changes. Let's say, just going to randomly make some changes. Um, it doesn't really matter. We can also add new blocks. Yeah, there's lots of activity here. Let's add this. Okay. Let's say we're happy with this. Then you do export part. Um, exported JSON. Exported parts. So let's see where did this end up? Um, it should be here. Exported JSON. Um, and let's edit that in here, like this. So, this is what it will produce. First, it found two new blocks, deep slained redstone ore, a lit version and a not lit version. Yeah, redstone was maybe not the best example. And it has found these characters that it could use to put them in. The rest is unchanged. So, this is the exported part, and basically what you need to do then is you uh, pick all this and so on uh, until at the end and you copy that in your own version of the part that you want to, to change. So that's basically how you can uh, change these parts, uh, make alterations in the game itself. Um, yeah, that's basically it. Yeah, there's a, a bit more to everything, but I think this should demonstrate roughly how uh, things work. By the way, one thing that I want to re uh, make sure. Uh, if you are in editing, and so you just typed this comment, 
Yeah, you see, it reverted to Shages because this world was not generated with that new asset, so it went back to the default. If you start editing, you make changes, then you save the world and load it back in. You can't export. You have to do this in one session. That's a limitation. Um, so you have, you have to export it first, put that in the assets, and then you can work from here. Okay, so basically that concludes this tutorial. Um, if you have any questions, feel free, feel free to ask. And yeah, happy. I hope to see lots of uh, lost city variations and asset system. I'm working on my own, by the way, which will hopefully be ready soon. So, see you later. Bye bye.